Here you go. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Um, okay, my topic today would be on quality assurance. Uh, but before that, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, okay, my name is Chong Fong Kai. So you can call me Kai. Uh, I've been working as a tester ever since I came out from work. Uh, came out to work uh, from uni. I graduated four years ago. Uh, I've been working in Singapore, um, Malaysia, Hong Kong, here and there a little bit. But mostly in financial, as you can see. And um, moving on to insurance as well. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me go through the topic of discussion of today. It's going to be a little bit technical and it's going to be a little bit boring. <laughs> so there won't be any Kung Fu around. Uh, well, I'm going to give you an introduction on what, is, what I'm actually going to talk about. And um, you can read for yourself pros and cons, <laughs> types of it, um, who's supposed to do what. And lastly, this is the most important part. I'm going to tell you what do I do every day. So you can have an insight of actually what do I do at work. And probably you have some idea of maybe you want to head down this low, uh, this line, or maybe you want to avoid it. <laughs> okay, um, difficulties and challenges. Uh, why why it keeps me going? What is the thing that I find fun and challenging about? Um, lastly, it will be just tips and tricks. Okay. Without further ado, uh, what is quality assurance? Anybody tell me? Or is there any testers here or quality assurance people? Just raise your hand, please. Anyone? I mean, what is testing? Uh, what is quality assurance? This makes sure everything goes great. Everything goes great. Any other one want to try? Any other answers? Quality assurance, what comes to mind when you look at these two words? Breaking stuff. Story. Sorry? Breaking stuff. Yeah, okay. alright. Anything else? Testing on your internet's work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you Testing on Internet Explorer. <laughs> Wait, uh, that's a similar thing as what he said. Breaking, <laughs> breaking things up. Anyway, okay. Um, all the answers are actually correct. It's, um, it's a very general concept. It involves everything and anything at all. Okay? But basically, I'm going to cover on a very specific part today. It will be testing. Okay? So, what is testing and what am I going to talk about? Okay. When you know when it comes to SDLC or even in, uh, other non-water form methodology that I have, when it comes when it comes to designing and uh, putting an idea in as a product, you have to go through these steps. First, you have to have the requirement. Okay, what is it that you want to do? Then you design all of these different things together, and then you get somebody to actually develop it. Maybe if it's a software, code it. Then that part will be testing. You test on the code to see that it works as a requirement. Then lastly, only you implement it, push it to production. So no matter you're using waterfall or jar methodology, whatever methodology you have, you actually go through this cycle. Anybody disagree with that? Uh, tell me something new. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to focus on talking about testing. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you will be guru in development and some of you might be guru in test. If I'm wrong, just tell me. <laughs> okay, so why do we need to test? The pros, okay. First thing first is all about money. When when you're working in a company, the company generally cares for your well-being. But the more the, the more important thing will be the money, the profit of the company. Okay. If a company is not making profit, they can't give you a salary. They can't continue to sustain the business. Everything goes crumbling down. So profit is important for the company as well as for you. So what do testers do? They actually save costs. Everything boils down to money. Okay, they prevent the loss of time. Imagine if a piece of software is not well tested, it goes out to production, you find a bug, comes back to fix it, somebody else has to look at the code and try to figure out what's wrong. So a lot of time is wasted and lost. Okay? Again, the same thing if a functionality that you have is not working as per intended. Okay? The requirement, for example, you're supposed to bank in 100 bucks, but actually only uh, it record it as credited 200 bucks then the organization is making a loss, okay? Next part would be <coughs> loss to business reputation. This is also very important. Um, you realize that a lot of companies in the industry currently are employing QA, uh, test engineers, test analysts. The main reason is that um, they don't want their company to, company to lose any reputation. So mainly all of these are, you see, financials, uh, banking, uh, insurance, all these where reputation is very important to them. So they will hire QA. But actually, 
this is just one of the reason okay even if you are not in any of this line your reputation you don't care about it okay it's still important for you to have testing and i'm going to exaggerate a little bit here i'm saying loss of life uh, i'm going to give you an example try to imagine this we have a software launch it is for the air traffic control it was not well tested so there were some bugs with it and things will crash and might crash so this if it's very critical um, software or anything whatever products are developed if it's not well tested and it's very critical it might cause loss of life so think about it testing is important cons of it okay there let's say you have a project you want to include this testing phase into it okay it will take more time to reach production okay there's more things for you to manage within that project itself you have to manage the testers you have to manage about downtime um, turnaround time for bugs fixes all these things have to put into consideration and there's a lot of work okay require upkeep cost um, you need to pay them salary of course nobody will work for free okay so but generally um, the pros will, will, will be overweigh the cons definitely okay because um, loss of profit loss of life these are things that is not really um, easily calculated and you shouldn't you shouldn't really put the price tag on the line okay next I'm going to talk about uh, the types of tests that we have and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to focus on okay these are the types of tests that we have okay when we talk about black box functional testing we have system integration tests um, user acceptance tests regression tests um, these are what the uh, test engineers and test analysts would normally do okay I'm using some specific terms here I'll try to explain it later okay uh, the later part would be white box testing which are unit testing I think most of you who are developers would, would be very familiar with this um, there will be performance testing different type of performance testings and um, security testing <coughs> but today I'm going to focus on uh, the functional testing which is actually the job of uh, QA okay so just now when I say testing the test phase itself is the responsibility of testers actually that is not entirely true I'm going to tell break down bring this down into further smaller parts so within the testing phase itself you can see that there's a unit test uh, goes from left to right okay first there will be unit test different components that you have to test and um, then you'll be SIT system integration test where all of these units will be tested together then once all the functionality test is uh, is done that means the program is working as per intended to the requirement we'll perform the performance test and a security test on it lastly the users will have to test on it to see whether it's acceptable or not so um, I need some help here okay um, can anyone tell me who is supposed to do a unit test anyone yeah, <coughs> yeah the programmer the developers yep correct what about the SIT system integration test sorry sys admin actually it falls to the uh, testers the quality QA system integration yep system integration test um, okay let me show you yep this will be the developers <coughs> part Okay, the functional testers will be the yellow one involved in SIT and UAT. Okay, um, performance will be done by performance testing. Sometimes, if the QA is uh, technical enough, they know more, they can actually take up the job as well. And security testing, usually, that would be application security team. It's very specialized and niche um, part. Okay, uh, what I'm going to cover today will be SIT and UAT. And you can see there's a, it's kind of hard to see, business user for the UAT because those are the people who actually gave us the requirement initially so when it comes to user assistance test they are supposed to test it but users would, uh, testers would have the responsibility to guide them as to what we have actually done for SIT it's all functional testing so now let's focus back on to SIT which is what I do every day yeah. <laughs> I see on my ass all day. <laughs> hey, my boss is here. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. 
First, you have to get the requirement from business. Again, I have to stress this is uh, regardless of what methodology that you use in your company. Okay, you need to have the requirements. Even if it's not vague, it's not fixed, you have to have some kind of vision and goal as to what you want to do, and everybody tries to achieve that. Okay, second part will be confirming the test goal. Because, um, you, let me give you an example. If without a scope to define, there's too many things for you to test. Um, taking, for example, just a simple text box for you to enter the text. There are many ways to enter it. It can be alphabet, it can be alphabet plus digital. And let's say there's 14 characters long, you have A, B, C, D, E, F, until Z, and then you have alphabets 1 to 9, 0 to 9, and um, the, the symbols as well. So there's too many combinations to test. We cannot test exhaustively. So we have to define the test scope and we test within that particular scope. Um, it will be simple. For example, we want to test that the login works, <coughs> the login part of this website works. Okay. Then we'll come to writing the test cases. Here we will list down uh, specifically, for example, login. We want to test that the login pass when um, you supply it with a correct password and username. And if it's not a matching username and password, it will fail. So this is where you uh, put down the details of different cases within the scenarios. Here, uh, during the SIT itself, you will execute the test cases that you have written. And you will record down whether it's a pass or a fail, along with proof of test. Um, it can be in video form. It can be in pictures. Then um, this part is actually, you provide status report to whoever is managing the project. This is what testers do during the SIT. The actions before this will actually be preparation uh, when the developer is actually developing the code based on the requirement that they have got the, uh, obtained. We'll be doing this part, and when the coding is done, we'll do the testing part, which is during the SIT. And finally, after that, we'll write a report. Um, here, it is, I will classify this as very important because the report is usually the part that people would not read at all. Okay, within a company. You all know the bureaucracy, I don't want to talk about it, but I will have to stress to you that it is important because within the report itself, we will tell you that um, how many bugs were found, how many were fixed, um, what are those that are critical, um, what can we seek to improve from this report. So, um, and also at times, when time is short, we can't fix all the bugs. Some of the uh, lower priority bugs are going to, we are going to let it through. We're going to sign off on the project, but these things will be there, but we, we know of this risk, so we can let it go, and everything is contained within this report. So, let me relate a uh, story to you. Um, I didn't join this profession by choice. <laughs> it, it was pure luck, okay? When I first graduated as a computer engineer, uh, I look at, I, I went for interviews, then um, I went to this particular company, the first company I went to, they offered me a job as a tester, and I went there. And I did not know anything about tester, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do there. I just reported there the first day and I fell asleep on the table. <laughs> <laughs> because they gave me this set of um, trainings to do that is kind of boring, but I, because I didn't understand it at that time. So I did it horribly. Uh, they asked me to test for this application. All the bugs I did not manage to find, I passed every single thing like a drunkard. <laughs> um, then, the, then the manager talked to me and he said, Fongkai, do you know what you're doing and why are you doing this? I said, I don't. Then he said, no, think of something, give me an answer. So I tell him, well, it's company policy that we need to test it, so I test it. Well, he said, no Bullshit. <laughs> That's the exact word he told me, okay? Bullshit. I want to give me a better answer. I couldn't think of any, so I just stared at me. He looked at me, like, two or three minutes, and I felt it was, it was like an eternity. And then he said, okay, let me tell you the answer. We are doing all these things so that we got our ass covered. Okay? Because we don't want any screw-ups. We want everything to be prim and proper. So you need testers to be there to ensure that these things are done properly. And whatever things that is of high risk, we can actually identify it and we fix it before the public knows about the dirty stuff going on behind the scenes. Okay? Yep. So this is what I do every day. Uh, the next part I'm going to talk about actually what's so difficult about it. Okay? Definitely there are some things that are very challenging. If we are going to do this day by day, it's going to be very boring. 
Okay. Um, what we have as challenges would be this is the top ones. Um, changing requirements. There are business units who think about, hey, I want to do this on the initial moment. So when we embark on a project, halfway through they say, actually, I don't want it to be this way. It's going to be troublesome, it's wrong. I think of a better idea. So halfway through the project, we have to change the requirements. And it's a pain in the ass for testers as well as developers. Um, especially for testers, because there is a lot of documentation that needs to be done. You have to think of scenarios, you have to think of test cases. Things like this takes a lot of time. So once the requirement change, you see all the testers will gather around and start to curse. <laughs> curse will never make the changes, okay? Um, okay, and I think it will be short timeline. Because I think it is in the current mentality that, hey, we want to get a product out to the market as fast as possible. So whatever the business come up with, we try to develop it quickly, and testing will be a little bit of testing, and then we try to push it out. But that is not the correct mentality. We should test based on what are the risks that we want to absorb, or what are the risks that we want to eliminate. But that's not the usual case. Uh, business would not probably understand that fully. So sometimes we are given very short timeline to try to pack everything together. If you have the resources to do it, um, it's still manageable. But sometimes it gets very, very difficult and challenging. Um, I relate to you my personal experience. The worst time I've ever tested and worked was um, checking in in office at about nine. I work till the next day, um, four in the morning, non-stop, just in the office. Uh, we had food delivery coming to the office. We have to stay in the office full time just to get the things through. And it was bad because I remember the second day when I was there, it was actually a uh, national day. I still have to sit in the office. Um, the next part would be, yep, ballooning regression test. Um, this particular line itself can actually cover a whole topic. I'm not going to cover that deep. But let me tell you what is regression test. Regression test basically is just a set of tests that you perform upon an application to ensure that you have not made any changes on the system or you have made changes on other parts of the system and you do not expect to see any changes on those functionalities that you have before. So this is what regression test is about. It's it's just there so that you can test that your system is stable and working as per intended as previously. So you try to imagine this, let's say we have three uh, functions to uh, apply to this system now, A, B, and C. It's a new system without anything at all. So just function A, B, and C. First, you launch function A. So you test for function A. When you, when you launch function B, you have to test that function B works and function A still works as per Intended. When function C comes, you have to test for A, B, and C. So the more you have, the more you have to add on to it. And if you think of, think of it as um, man hour, you'll be adding more and more onto it. So how do we actually um, go on to tackle this issue? Um, a lot of companies will use this approach as uh, risk-based testing. So they look at whichever test case or scenarios that are most important to their business that would disrupt their business if it fails. So these are things that they want to test. So every regression test, they will select this field to test. All the others, they will assume it is correct. But testers should not assume. So there's another way to do it. That is, um, those uh, old functions that you have, you can actually automate it. Okay. Um, this is something rather, um, I wouldn't say new, but it's rarely used in um, Malaysia, or at least in this region. Um, basically, you use a pro you design a program to run some action onto the other application, and you record down the result. Okay, you can use that actually to tackle this issue. Um, product and domain domain knowledge retention. Uh, I'm talking about when you're going to test a product. It's best if you get the person who knows it well to test it, especially if the product is being built on over time, and a lot of functionalities get added on over time. If the person is well versed with the product, they can know, okay, I know what should be tested uh, and which one I should focus on, what else I can test. Okay? Um, but you see, people like us nowadays, we move from company to company. Um, we don't actually, very seldom you see people who stick to the same company for years, 15, 20 years. Your dad might be doing it, your mom might be doing it. So I don't think we, our generation will be doing that. So. 
this is one of the issue. If you don't know the product, how you're supposed to test it, okay? These are the things that we do uh, encounter every day. Uh, heavy documentation, there's a lot of things to be done. Let me just go back a little bit and show you. Okay, here we will have, uh, we have to read the document from business. Here we have to prepare documents uh, showing what is our test scope. It will be a long winded document. And um, test scenarios will be, for example, in Word or Excel or so you can hand down all the ideas. Okay, um, test cases would be, we'll have to write down all the steps you will take um, to complete the task, the testing itself. So every single step has to be record, uh, written down. For example, step one, launch the browser. Step two, uh, click on blah, blah, blah. So all of these things will be uh, written down and it takes a lot of time. So there's a lot of documentation involved. Okay, so last part. Tips for analysts and engineer. Um, I have to borrow from seven habits. Begin with the end in mind. You have to be very clear on what is needed to be achieved. Um, and you work in line with that. You want a project uh, application to be risk, not risk fee, but uh, basically at least with some acceptable risk. Um, so you have to work towards that. Sometimes it, you do not need to follow closely the uh, business requirement document. If common sense tells you that that's wrong, you have to question back, back, them back, okay? Um, next thing would be to put yourself in other shoes. You have to think of um, the feelings of the developers, okay? Sometimes you have to be strict as well, but uh, sometimes you must understand they're doing their job as well. So you, don't, you just don't push them too hard. And I know a lot of you are developers here, you probably hate me, but just don't kill me yet. Okay? Uh, communication. Uh, usually when I work, I do communicate well with my um, Developers, um, in many instances, it actually proves very fruitful. Um, there are things sometimes they no, do notice there are things wrong. If, if you don't communicate well with them, they won't tell you. So if you do become friends with them, they'll tell you in advance, and you can anticipate what is going to happen, and you don't waste time doing on things that is going to be wasted. Well, I think I have to conclude here. Thank you very much. Thank you.